Newegg wants your dirty old crusty CPU. Intel needs to lay off a whole bunch of people and AMD, my goodness, they're just twisting the knife. The prices on Ryzen 9000 are so good. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, August 1st, 2024. New month, look at us go. New month, new you, new CPU, potentially, in case you're thinking about picking up the Ryzen 9000 series CPU. Newegg wants your business, and so they've opened up their CPU trade-in program as well as PC trade-in program so that you can potentially take that old little piece of junk you have and give it to them and then use that to subsidize your next purchase. However, while Newegg has done a program like this before with their graphics cards, it's kind of in the same vein that the prices are not great. They're not giving you a lot of value here, but it's just meant to be a more convenient route in case you don't want to sell to third parties. So Newegg is offering really low rates, about 60 to 40% of what you can get out on the open market, at least given eBay sales prices at the current moment, something like the 7800X 3D, they're only going to give you 220 bucks for it. Whereas the 14900K, you're going to get 300 bucks for it. But depending on where you're at with your warranty situation with Intel, you know, 300 bucks doesn't sound that bad. <laughs> but as is the case with their GPU program, one of the wrinkles that you have with it is that you have to buy something else at Newegg. You can't just take that money and use it later on. It has to be applied at the purchase that you're using it for at that moment. Whereas other companies like Jawa or other third-party uh, buyback programs will give you cash for it so that you can use the money on whatever you want. Whereas with Newegg, if you're trading in your CPU, you gotta be getting something else with them at that current moment. So it doesn't appear to be super reasonable, but in case you wanna be just uber lazy, Newegg does have that option for you. And Intel looks like they're running out of options for trying to find out how to continue profitability and make it sure that they survive as a company. And it's being reported that they're expected to make massive layoffs sometime either this week or in the coming weeks and announcing a 10% global reduction in their overall workforce, which allegedly could save them about $10 billion over the next year, simply because of how many people they employ. 10,000 jobs is obviously a lot. So this would bring them down to roughly 100,000 total employees, which is significantly more than you find at other competitors like AMD and Nvidia. Ian Cutras posted this over on Twitter, showing you the headcount of what in Intel has had at their earnings reports in terms of total employees. And you can see it's been a, a significant amount more than both Nvidia Nvidia and AMD. In fact, AMD and Nvidia combined still do not get anywhere near Intel's total headcount. And this is due to a lot of reasons, right? Intel's in a lot of different spheres. They've been around for longer. They've been investing in various different enterprises. And there's been some bloat that's happened with that. They've kind of been a legacy company and now they kind of have to be a more innovative new company. Whereas an AMD had to stay lean for a very long time. Nvidia only recently got this uber successful, kind of like how Intel was earlier on in the early 2000s to early 2010s. So there's a lot of reasons why this is happening, but uh, Intel looks like they, they're still trying to trudge through that and save money to make sure that they uh, can come out, especially this Raptor Lake debacle ahead, hopefully, we'll see. While I want Intel to get their stuff together, I absolutely do not want them to stop existing as a company, especially because we do need competition in the market in order to drive things forward. But while Intel is trying to save money, uh, Reese is also trying to save you money, so just let him do that for you. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Hope you guys are doing well, and let's just jump into it. Starting off with the MSI Mag Core Liquid E360. This AIO CPU liquid cooler available in white is going for only $109.99 after rebate, making it $30 off. But then next up, we have the ASUS Prime X670P Wi-Fi ATX AM5 motherboard going for only $135.99, making $94 off. And then lastly, we have the Kuryu GN10, which is a 27-inch 1440p 240 hertz mini LED gaming monitor going for only $313.99 with the coupon applied, making it $146 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, 
I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of the hot news. Cheers. Oh, well, Reese, it looks like AMD is getting the deal of a lifetime when it comes to AI. We already know NVIDIA's earnings reports are through the moon. NVIDIA's earning hand over fist in terms of cash flow from all of their servers, and AMD is in the same boat. They posted really strong new earnings reports for what they earned in Q2 of this year, but that comes at a severe cost of gaming GPUs. The things that we tend to talk about here on Hot News, AMD is just really not pushing these things out, which kind of sucks. But overall, they do appear to be healthy because they had a 115% increase in data center revenues. They broke it down. You could see year over year data center is up massively to 2.8 billion. Gaming revenue is down 60%. A lot of that does include things like the PlayStation 5, as well as the Xbox Series consoles. And the PlayStation 5 hasn't necessarily been selling all that well this year, especially with the anticipated refresh or mid-gen upgrade of the PS5 Pro. Some people are waiting for that. So revenues are down. Uh, incredibly, we've already talked heavily about how their market share with RX 7000 is lackluster. NVIDIA is just crushing them this generation in terms of real world sales, and it's being reflected here. Gaming sales are just down really big. But then also client revenue when it comes to things like Ryzen processors, they're doing great. 49% increase year over year. Ryzen's killing it, crushing it. Intel is, you know, putting their foot in their mouth and then chewing on it and spinning back out. And it's making it very easy for companies and people and individuals to choose AMD and the Ryzen CPUs right now. So a bit of a mixed bag, especially as a gaming enthusiast. I would like to see gaming revenue higher. I think the RX 7000 is such a good good proposition. I really, uh, I'm struggling here as like receiving this data and trying to synthesize it with what I see from what AMD and NVIDIA provide. I, I firmly believe AMD provides incredible value, especially this generation. It was also good last generation and it's just, it's not working out in sales. But we talked about Ryzen doing well in earnings reports. We finally got pricing details on the Ryzen 9000 series CPUs. They were supposed to go for sale yesterday, and it turns out that Newegg and Best Buy just decided to post their CPUs for sale that day anyways, and even though they have been delayed for a couple of weeks. So starting off with the Ryzen 5000 CPUs, the XT variants, the 5900 XT and 5800 XT, those are gonna be going for $349 and $249 respectively. Quite good prices for what is a eight core processor and a 12 core processor. Those are relatively agreeable, especially, you know, thinking that sometime down in the Black Friday sale window, they're gonna come down even more, but it's, it's good to see that there. But the Ryzen 9000 series pricing, incredible, all right? This shows me that in AMD either is uh, worried about what Arrow Lake's gonna do, or they really just want to drive the foot into the ground of Intel's grave right now because the 9950X is coming in at 599, the 9900X is supposed to be coming in at 449, the 9700X is supposed to be 359, and the 9600X is supposed to be 279. These are all reflective of price decreases from the Ryzen 7000 series. And based on all of the leaked benchmarks that we've gotten, these CPUs look like they're gonna perform well in games, definitely better than what's currently out on the market in terms of non X3D chips. So that's incredibly excited. But then also when you look compared to the current prices that you can find things at. So something like the 7950X, yes, it launched at 699. So the 599 price point of the 9950X is a hundred dollar decrease, but it's only $50 more than the 7950X is right now. And you can look at that for the 9900X, just another $50 price increase. The 9700X is a $30 price increase over the 7700X. And then the 9600X is a $50 increase, but a $20 decrease from the launch price of Ryzen 7000. So this is all beautiful. This is good news, especially considering we haven't seen AMD lower their prices in quite some time. Ryzen 5000, they jacked the prices way up. First time we saw 299 for a Ryzen 5 CPU. The 5800X came in at 449, so now the 9700X coming in at 359 appears to be quite healthy. The 5900X was also $100 more than the 9900X, and then the 5950X was even $100 more than the 7950X. So just price decreases happening. It looks like AMD is really trying to 
adopt market share at this point when it comes to CPUs. This is their time to shine. Intel with the Raptor Lake issues appears to be losing a lot of enthusiast trust. AMD putting themselves in the position with CPUs that are gonna perform well, but then also are coming in at a price decrease. I don't know if I have much to criticize here. I'm just, I'm excited to see third-party reviews come out and hopefully the uh, price point matches with the performance level. This appears to be uh, time for Team Red to shine. But now it's your time to shine in comment response. We got Burning WP saying, I love how the headline is about Apple AI and the most commented thing is Logitech being idiots. That was overwhelming in the comments yesterday. So many people discussing the Logitech Forever Mouse. Like it is, everybody is coming out to decry this idea. Uh, I mean, we have iRock saying, Logitech making a forever mouse is a joke. They're using switches in their high-end mice. Now that barely lasts a year. Ran Roy saying that Logic is nothing like a watch. You pay for your watch once. Then Kadota saying, if only Logitech managed to make a long-lasting headset first, I might believe they're capable of making a long-lasting anything. And then Bokami saying, everyone is going into a subscription model. Why can't we? Bad idea, Logitech. I'll bet you if you follow through, this idea will die on the vine. And Goldman Static saying, why would anyone need software update on a mouse? What a scam. So that when, when like AI comes to like infect your, your mouse, they protect you. That's, that sounds right. I don't, I don't really have any good reason. I wasn't happy about it, but I didn't have this much visceral disgust in my bones. I just thought, wow, what a stupid idea that probably will never come to market. And I was going to leave it there. You guys just hundreds of comments about this. What's I. I don't really have much more to respond to besides, yeah, Logitech, what a stupid idea, my goodness. All right, well, I'm gonna respond to nothing else because uh, I gotta leave, I'm gonna go. I'm done here. I'll see you back here for more of the hottest tech news tomorrow.